Hey everybody, welcome to episode three of Inline Plus TV. On today's show, it is unbelievably huge. The Adelaide Roller Derby girls are over here in Melbourne on their way to Derby Camp. They're gonna have a So You Think You Can Dance Off. Also too, Jenny Logue is down at Paran Skate Park, just up the road. She's gonna take us to the world of aggressive skating. And also too, Barrel House Bessie takes us to Glenelg Beach in Adelaide, skates around that mecca in Adelaide. It's a huge show, lots to get through. Let's get skating. Howdy, it's Barrel House Bessie. We're skating down at Glenelg Beach in Adelaide today and we've got the one and the only Hutto playing some tunes for everyone and joining us day on the beach. What's so great about Glenelg? Uh, apart from the fact that I was born here, uh, the beaches. The, the beaches, beaches, the people, the sunshine, the palm trees. Newly installed palm trees. Uh, roller skating? The shops, the roller skating. The roller skating. <laughs> roller skating. It's roller skating everywhere, people. Hanging down Glenelg Beach on the rollerblades and uh, skating around, punching to these likely lads. What's going on, boys? Oh, we're, we're selling, selling bandanas, bandanas for canteen yeah. research. Yeah? yeah. And, and we, we are mixtex. Yeah. We are mixtex. Oh, you good lads. Does it feel good on the inside? To, oh, um, yeah, great. yeah, yeah. It feels yeah, great, good. man. Yeah. It feels good. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just in any city in Australia, these are the Glenelg beaches on a near perfect day. It's great for skating. Skating on the beach in Glenelg doesn't get much easier than this. You step off the historic tram. It's a bit upgraded now, but you step off, you roll out, and you're right on the beach. It's a great day to be here in Glenelg. Nice, sunny, and you got a free ride. Bros for life, yeah. and we're we're gonna stick together forever. Yeah. yeah. Where's the best pl spot to be selling bandanas? On the tram. Oh, yeah. On the, on the, the tram. bus over there is really tram. good. Yeah, because no, not on the tram, because no one buys anything on the tram. So. Yeah. And what is yeah. cool about hanging out on Glenelg Beach? Oh, uh, no, no school. Beach. No, no school. school. Yeah, um, no. <laughs> skating today in Glenelg. We got some pretty mean beach volleyball about to start up behind us. Want to have a look? <laughs> so we're here on the very famous Glenelg Pier. It's a great place to skate because the surface is quite smooth. It's bitumen and it's nice, nice great to skate on. Um, as you can see, people are all out here having a nice day in the sun, but we're going to keep skating. things on the Glenelg Pier. You can't skateboard, but it doesn't say anything about bicycles or roller skates. What is cool about hanging out at Glenelg? Well, I think just the atmosphere and sitting just looking over the sea. It's just beautiful. And all those rollerbladers whizzing by? Oh, they're excellent to watch. <laughs> That's spirit. <laughs> Definitely. Skating in Glenelg, it's great. You've got these fantastic bitumen paths all up and down the beach. You can get so much practice in on any day of the week because it's never too crowded. There's always just something to do down here, like whether it's playing beach volleyball or just hanging out with your friends or going to the beach house or cafes. A lot of people come down here for obviously sports, you know, like beach volleyball. I see a lot of people rollerblading around here, skateboarding as well, it's pretty common. And um, yeah, really nice hangout. So there you have it, the underdog of Australia when it comes to capital cities, Adelaide, has a little gym like this, a beach that's perfect for all sports on wheels, perfect waters, great sunshine, and you can come down here anytime you want on the tram that runs straight here from the city. Thanks for watching us on Inline Plus, and we'll catch you next week. Inline Plus TV, with Barrel House Bessie and me. We like to go roller skating when it's sunny by the sea. And now we're all going to take our skates off, head back to the nunnery and have a bit of a dance off. What? 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 What?
is Bro House Bessie and we are here at the Melbourne Museum, downtown Melbourne, at 10 o'clock at night having a social skate with girls from Brisbane, Adelaide, Sydney and Melbourne all together for the name of Roller Derby. It's a sight to see here tonight in Victoria. So, thanks for having us, Victoria. Yeah! <laughs> conversation going for a couple of months. We yeah. don't know what we each other look like and this is our first meeting and yeah. this woman rocks. <laughs> I love her and I've never met her before but And this it. is the funniest like roller girl on the forum man with the craziest stories. They're all true, that's what's the and, then, and then you put up your experience of roller yeah. skating we're all like inadequate. No my <laughs> god no 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 <laughs> it's awesome because yeah. No we didn't know, no yeah, visuals. we didn't know what each other looked like, and Purely we talked on the forum. Yeah. yeah, so you kind of like bond with someone, not knowing their months, identity. Months, yeah. da and daily. Like I speak to Dole more than my husband. <laughs> Serious. I think I speak to you yeah. more than my husband. <laughs> It's so good seeing so many girls together on yeah. skates. Look at them, powerful, beautiful women. Now we're all going to take our skates off, head back to the nunnery, and have a bit of a dance off. But that's for us to know and you to think about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now the cut's over, are there any tips gonna... for the dance off? Tips oh. or tits? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vader and me, we're dancing, can't you see? On In Line Plus TV. Woo yeah, we're skating, her and me. Wow, you sure I got the moves going. It's all about the philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch what you can't afford. the show. My name's Jenny and we're here at Paran Skate Park. So we're going to go see what's going on around the park, talk to a few of the, uh, the guys down here and see what they're up to. Hey Tom, how's it going? Bad. Alright, so what's good about Paran Skate Park? There's a lot of range pretty much and if you want to skate something, it's always there to skate. You can skate bird or mini. So is this, quite, um, is this quite a variety of stuff to do here? Like quite a varied skate park? Yeah, yeah. that's pretty much what it is. That's why I like it. And you come down here regularly? Yeah, it's my local park, so... Alright, cool. Well, let's have a look, see what you got. You better land it. <laughs> I'm here down at the skate park with Tom's dad. Um, he's come down to check out what's going on. Um, what do you think of the whole skate park thing for your son? I think it's a great... It's great. I've been coming for three years and he's a... Uh, you know, he's grown through the experience. He's made some great friends and um, it's good wild play. So it's a safe place for kids to come and Absolutely. you'd recommend um, parents letting their kids come down to the skate park? Yeah, I'd call it what you call dangerous safe. Um, it looks worse than it is Excellent. and um, they, um, they get a lot out of it. So nice to see a good supportive parent getting into the skating. Uh, so let's go see what the other guys are up to. What advice would you give to some kids that, you know, maybe haven't been to the skate park before but want to come and have a go? Um, basically just come down, you know, everyone's really positive and about having a good time. It's all about just having fun, basically that's the main thing, so, you know, don't feel in intimidated by anyone because everyone here is uh, really welcoming yeah. people, so, you know, cool. I'd, I'd just ask them to come on down and just have a good time. What's the best thing about skating? Um, landing a trick. Yeah. Nothing right. like it, really. Just feels good? Yeah. Yeah, and what are you working on at the moment? Um, I'm working more on true topsoles. Okay, what does that look like? Can you show us one? Um, like on the ledge? Yeah, on the ledge. Ah, oh. and there we have it, first try. True topsole. 
So there we have it, that's True Top Soul by Tom, first try. <laughs> How does this skate park compare to other skate parks? Like, is this one of the best ones in Melbourne? I would say, like, I'd say it's probably one of the best ones, in my opinion. I don't know, it's just really small, really compact. Everything's sort of, everyone can have a go at it, so... Yeah. Cool, and is it quite yeah. central so everyone can get here? Yeah, Paran's yeah. a real central place, like, close to the yeah. city. Public transport's really easy, you know, you've got the 75 tram just over by the side. So what's the environment like down here at the skate park? I mean, there's different sort of aged guys around. How does that all work out? Well, I think what happens is that you, you get young kids and kids a couple of years older, they get good role models. Some of the older kids, as they step through, have become mentors. Yep. Um, Tom's had a bit of one-to-one -one on people like with people like Shane Yost, who's yep. a world number two or three. So um, he sort of passes on stuff like how to fall safely, how to use a know, skate park. They, they, and and you, 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 learn, you learn by watching and you learn by kids giving him recommendations of different techniques, try this, try that. Go over the other side of the skate park and catch some more guys in action. So come on, keep up. You better run. Okay. <laughs> Got it? <laughs> You're still with me? All right, Paul, come over. <laughs> Get to know about this whole skate thing going on in Melbourne. Uh, just through meeting people and just um, through the skate shop and yeah. just uh, just having a look on different websites. And that so sort of did thing. you, um, is this your first time on Thursday night or do you come here all the time? I've uh, been here a couple of Thursdays now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a good regular yeah. Thursday night. And how does this skate park compare to ones you've skated over in um, WA? Um, just, it seems to be much more geared for bladers, so. Yeah, and so there's awesome. quite a, a wide range of stuff to do? Uh, yeah, for all levels, like yeah. uh, you've got your beginners and yeah. pros. <laughs> behind us so we'll um, we'll let Paul get going and have a skate on that and we'll check out what he's doing Thursday night skating here in inner city Paran at the Paran skate park so yeah come down and we'll see you down here for a skate Okay, well that was ep three and it was pretty good. Next week, Jo Gilbert, she's 72 years young and she's gonna unload some wisdom on us. The Roller Derby girls go to derby camp and uh, things get even more funky. And we check out the Torrens River in Adelaide. There's a heap more after that. Enjoy your skating, thanks for watching. See you next week, bye for now. My name is Shane Yost, I've been skating for around about 14 years. Um, I'm originally from Tasmania, uh, but I live here in Melbourne now. I'm just sitting here on the stool at the bar. In the old days, uh, I grew up in Launceston in Tasmania. Um, notorious for all its hills and 
and they are, you know, the, the crazy hilly environment that, that surrounds sort of the main town. So I pretty much lived at the top, so you know, every, every time we went for a skate it was hill bombing all the way down to go to the skate park and then a trudge all the way back up again to go home. Um, it was a cool place to grow up in even though there wasn't much to skate. Uh, when I was there, I mean we had an 8 foot cement vert ramp that was like 12 foot wide. And one of our favourite pastimes was jumping in the car at 3 o'clock in the morning and going to the, the highest hills we could find and just bombing all the way down and then getting another car, skitching it the way back up, up top again and then doing it again. And, seeing how fast we could go and seeing if we could find a steeper hill than, the, than we just rode. So, yeah, those are the days growing up in Tasmania. I always, just my passion was uh, going upside down several hundreds of feet in the air well like I'd like to believe um, and yeah so vert for me just it was just a natural thing that's why I sort of moved away from skating everything and just focused on one thing so I could uh, see how far I could take it and uh, it was just what I enjoyed the most When I first started travelling, there was a lot of Australians around, there was a lot of guys. I mean, six places of the top ten uh, in street orbit uh, was taken up by Australians, which is just, I mean, that's that's just a phenomenal, phenomenal concept. Um, but, I mean, there was a lot of money in those days, you know, there was a lot of things going on, there was a lot more contests, there was a lot of things just, just happening. Um, so there was a lot more opportunities. So you know, there was a lot, a lot of chances for kids to get sponsored and go overseas. Nowadays, it's it's very difficult for kids uh, to go over and, and, and qualify. Everything is based around turning pro through the ASA, um, you know, through the ASA ranks before you get any opportunities to be able to take it further. So for any aspiring kid or any guys that you know want to go to the next level, it's a very hard task because you've got to fund. Your airfares, accommodation, everything. Get yourself to America um, without the guarantee of actually turning pro in the first place. At the moment, it's it's very difficult because there's just not the money there. There's not the the backing. Um, so it's yeah, it's it's a tough time. These days, being a pro is its very different from the ideal that people seem to believe that a pro should be. Um, kids these days have these crazy notions of pros sitting around, smoking drugs, drinking alcohol, going to parties and just <coughs> being rock stars. But honestly, if you want that kind of lifestyle, go and become a musician because that's the only real place that you're going to be able to carry on like that. Our sport isn't strong enough um, and big enough anymore to be able to support that kind of that, that kind of craziness. And in some ways, that's that kind of attitude is what's led to our downfall. I've seen so many guys with so so much crazy talent, like Jaron Grobe and John Bergeron. That you know, where are they today? They lasted. They lasted all of you know two or three years where they just went nuts and I mean you can do it for a while but in the end it was the you know the lifestyle that killed them I'm still out up there doing what I'm doing you know I'm one of the last ones left uh, one of the last professionals left in Australia that's still getting paid to ride still getting paid to travel um, still doing shows still doing all these things and it's because I've taken it seriously and because I've treated it as a business and that's where you can go. I'm 28, I've been doing this for 14 years now. Um, my job is a professional rollerblade. And it's because I've taken it seriously and that's what you have to do. If, you, if that's the kind of job you want, that's the kind of career, that's what you need to do. You said you were sorry.
whiskey and deer. You know, from my opinion, man, it's, it's been an amazing journey. Um, I've been able to do what I love as a professional. And I mean, I came from a little place in Launceston, Tasmania, in the middle of nowhere. And it's just because, um, you know, I liked it that much that I wanted to keep doing it and take it as far as I can. And it doesn't matter what you do, or where you want to go, whatever profession it is, if you truly love it, just do it. Who cares? Like, stuff what anyone thinks about it. Just keep doing it, have fun with it, and see how far it can take you. Hello?